All right, guys, take a look at this snake. I happen to have a male pastel bamboo ball python. This was one of my hatchlings from last year. A really beautiful snake. And I'm gonna have this guy available at the next reptile show in just eight weeks. <laughs> what a beauty that is, huh? Such a beautiful snake. And if you're, if you're breeding ball pythons and you're hatching them out, let me tell you, you're gonna have an incredible amount of ball pythons for sale. I actually had close to 100. I didn't expect to have that many. And if you're breeding, I'd say adult, mature adult females, you can probably expect to have anywhere from seven or more <laughs> eggs, ball python eggs from each female, and most of the eggs actually hatch. <laughs> Look at that guy coming right at the camera. <laughs> He's checking it out. He's like, what in the world is that? That is the camera. That's pretty cool. These bamboos are awesome snakes. I really love them. I love the colors and patterns. And as a matter of fact, uh, when I started selling these, uh, they kind of were kind of slow sellers at, at the start. And then towards the end of the season, when things really started picking up, these started selling like hotcakes. They were going off, off my shelves like crazy. So today I kind of wanted to cover where you can sell your ball python hatchlings. And there's a lot of people that, you know, I've actually seen on the forums. You go to a lot of these reptile forums and on the internet, and start reading through people that are thinking about getting into breeding that actually haven't bred ball pythons and and they're really concerned about the number one thing they're really concerned about is selling the ball python hatchlings and can i sell these you know uh, uh, will, will people actually buy these you know will they pay good money for them and and let me tell you they sell really well and it really depends where you're marketing them and how you're selling them. So I'd say it, it's funny because before I actually bred ball pythons, I was kind of thinking the same thing. And you know, I, I, I actually signed up for an account for Morph Market and I actually paid the annual fee and decided, you know, I'm gonna sell these on Morph Market because I'm not sure if they're gonna really sell in my local markets that well or not. And come to find out, they were selling so good at the local reptile shows, I decided, that I'm not going to sell a single one on Morph Market. I'm not going to ship them. I'm going to sell them all at local reptile shows. And there's quite a few people that posted comments underneath my video saying, hey, I want to I wanna drive up to your house and buy that snake. And I decided, you know, I got so much stuff going on here, I really can't open my house up to be kind of a retail pet store. And of all these people coming to my house, you know, if I'm selling 100 snakes out of my house, that's 100 people coming up. And, you know, it's, it gets kind of crazy with a lot of people coming up to the house. So I decided I wasn't gonna sell on Morph Market and I wasn't gonna sell out of my house. I decided also that I wasn't gonna ship reptiles. There's been a lot of people saying, hey, I wanna buy that snake and I want you to ship it out if you can. And I decided really, you know, I think it's a little too hard on the snake to actually ship them through the mail. You know, there's, it's pretty much, the main way that the big breeders do it, they just ship them out. They do next day air straight to your doorstep. It's really easy to buy a snake online, have it shipped to your door the next day. And I decided, you know, the, you know how rough it it could be with the, the the UPS drivers or you know the post office and stuff like that. Or you know if you have really bad weather conditions, if you have a blizzard somewhere between you know the ends of where you're shipping it from and two, and you get caught up in a blizzard I really don't want a snake getting too cold or too hot or taking the abuse of shipping I don't think it's really fair for the snake and I'm not really at the size to where you know I have you know thousands and thousands of snakes and I have to unload them through the mail so I decided pretty much this first last year when I had a hundred hatchlings and it was really my really my first really big year hatching ball pythons and I decided I was only gonna sell at the reptile shows and that's been working really well and it's a matter of fact I think I only have just a handful of ball pythons left less than 20 and as a matter of fact on my last show I started with like I think it was 24 because I bought the bigger displays and then I sold quite a few so I'm down to where I'm less than 20 so the next show there's some people asking me well when, when can when can I see your snakes when is the next show and I'm actually gonna go through some of these snakes before the show maybe I'll kind of show showcase what I have left 
and you can kind of figure out what you want if you want to you know get them at the shows here in Colorado and the next show is in eight weeks there's a, a reptilian nation and Denver Repticon eight weeks and nine weeks pretty much back to back the weekends and that is where I sell all of my ball pythons and there's a lot of people sell them, and you know, ball pythons on a lot of different places. You can sell them on Craigslist. A lot of people sell hatchlings there. There's a website called kingsnake.com, and there's a classified section really big for ball pythons. A lot of people sell on kingsnake.com if you're looking for a place to sell. Uh, you can sell on Morph Market. You can actually bring these into your local reptile stores and say, hey, you want a bamboo? You know, and they're basically, you know, my reptile stores around here they're basically begging me for bamboos they'll say hey we'll give you $300 store credit for that snake as many snakes as you have because they breed some of them and they turn around and resell some of them and it's a really good um, really good business for the reptile stores there's also wholesalers if you go to kingsnake.com and you look through the classifieds there's a lot of wholesalers that'll say we'll take any ball pythons any snakes that you have doesn't matter what the snake is and we'll give you uh, so much per snake and the the minimum requirement for some of these guys is you have to have at least 10 snakes you know to and they pay the shipping and they pay you so much per snake but they want at least 10 snakes and as a matter of fact I was talking to some of them before I actually hatched out my ball pythons and realized you know how easy they were to sell and I was talking about my reticulated pythons and they said well you know we'll take your reticulated pythons how much do you want and you know it's kind of a deal uh, they typically will pay I would say about 25% of market value for a snake so if a snake is worth 400 uh, I'd say most pet stores, you know, just the you know, guy coming in off the street, they'll probably pay half price. They'll give you 200 bucks, and a wholesaler will give you about a hundred. Because what the wholesaler does is they mark it up, they double it, sell it to the pet store, and the pet store doubles it again, sells it to the customer, and it's that's pretty much <laughs> how it works, you know, in the pet store and the wholesale business. So for me, I'd rather cut out the wholesaler and you know, kind of give. Um, I'd say more of a savings to some of the local customers and cut out Morph Market altogether. And, 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 and the thing about Morph Market you have to realize is a lot of people what they'll do is they'll price cut everyone else. So, so you'll see bamboos on there for $550, maybe $600, all the way down to maybe $250. So there's a huge price swing. And what a lot of people do is they'll get on there, all right, I want to sell my snake in Morph Market, how about 225? And then someone will get on there, how about 200 bucks? And they'll just keep cutting the price. And what that does is it really reduces the market for the, the market price for the, the morphs. So I'd say Morph Market is probably a double-edged sword. It's the best thing that ever happened to the reptile industry, and it's one of the worst because everybody's cutting every Everybody else's prices and it's driving the prices down incredibly fast faster than if we didn't have morph market but if you didn't have morph market it'd be harder to see all the morphs and the combos and really get excited about ball pythons and all the other snakes and as a matter of fact if you go to morph market now they have a lot of different combos not only uh, just ball pythons they have reticulated pythons and wh when I first started on morph market They only had three or four categories and now they'll have geckos and retics and a whole bunch of, I think they have like 15 or 20 and they keep adding different categories for different animals uh, They may have blue tongue skinks and a bunch of other stuff king snakes And it's it's pretty cool to go to morph market and see what the new stuff is uh, popping up on the website so so for me I'm going to only sell my snakes at the local reptile shows, at least for now. If I got bigger, I would say, you know, if I got to the point where I'm breeding thousands of ball pythons, I'd probably consider shipping through the mail, listing them on Morph Market like some of the other big breeders. But for me, you know, just producing anywhere from, I'll, I'd figure I'll produce between probably 50 to 200 snakes a year. On my best year, I could probably produce about 200 if I bred all these, and that's probably 
probably good enough for selling at the local reptile shows. I'm thinking about maybe expanding at the reptile shows and maybe having instead of just one eight foot table, maybe two or three, and then I can have some of my really older snakes and my younger snakes and kind of mix them in. So what I wanted to show you at the very end of this video is my setups for the reptile shows. I actually bought some really nice ARS display cases. If you haven't seen them before, they're pretty awesome and they're not really that expensive. I think they're about uh, I don't know if, if you can quote me on this, but I think they're about $350 for one box, which includes three display cases. Really professional looking. I bought them right at the beginning, and I would highly recommend them. I really love them. And let me show you those display cases really quick. All right, so take a look at this. This is my ARS display case all boxed up and these are super heavy duty i'd say this probably weighs maybe 40 or 45 pounds they're really heavy duty this this thing you could probably drop it on the street and it'd be perfectly fine i can't believe these are built really well and the way it works is they actually the display cases actually stack on this and you can actually flip them over let me kind of show you how this works so you take out it has these little kind of a a kind of a foam pad in between these to protect them. You need to take all three out. And the thing I like about them is they're locking and they're and the thing you know some people have these little deli cups and and I've actually seen people steal snakes at the shows and these really have a good security system for your snakes. So the way it works is you just put the little foam pad right up on here and then this up on top of the foam like this and then just like this and that is it and some people actually drape uh, like a, a cloth underneath but I think you know it looks so professional with just the case and everything is really nice I really like it just set up the way it is and then it has the keys right here and if you unlock it the way it works is this slides to the right and drops down and then the front kind of just slides open and these are the biggest cases you can get from ARS with the, the two dividers they have one with three dividers Three, three compartments and then they have another one with five compartments. So I actually started with the five compartment display cases and then my holdbacks, the ones that I had you know, held back from last year that I didn't sell, then I'm trying to sell this year, they're actually too big for the five compartment uh, display cases. So I actually, got, I actually got busted by the Department of Agriculture. <laughs> they came in and said, there's not enough room for those snakes in the display. And then I was pretty much forced to buy these bigger display cases and um, I, I use these at the very last show for my bigger snakes so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna switch some of these out with the, the, the display cases with the five compartments and let me show you what the five compartment display case looks like all right so I replaced this with my five compartment display case this is what it looks like and what I like to do on these is I put a little scan code in the bottom so if people have a QR code reader it goes to my YouTube channel <laughs> which is pretty cool and then on here I put the the kind of snake and the clutch number and the price and then if it sells I put sold and it's it's been working really good and the, the cool thing is is the same key works for both display cases so you don't have to you know search for keys for, for each display case and now uh, I actually have four complete boxes of each size so I have enough for two eight-foot tables you can put four of these uh, displays right here on an eight-foot table and so I have eight of them I could co cover completely cover uh, two eight-foot tables <clears throat> and I'll probably have you know my hold backs here and the only thing I don't like about them is you can't remove the dividers you can't make them bigger or smaller and you know that's that's kind of the one things I wish I wish I would have had you know when I was when I had a problem but the problem is if you had removable dividers then the tops wouldn't slide unless you had you know some kind of a drop in from the front and <laughs> it'd be a completely completely different design if you had drop in dividers but you know I really like these and then there's the other ones that kind of have the thirds instead of 
one in the middle it has two here so you have three compartments and you can also go with those but I decided you know I actually I actually had really little snakes in here too it gives them a lot more room you can see them a lot easier I think in the bigger compartments versus these small ones but when you have a lot of hatchlings let me tell you now, actually when I first started selling last year I was putting two snakes in each of these because I had so many it was I had more than that, that would hold and I was doubling up on my snakes and then I got to the end and I didn't have enough to fill my whole display so I was like trying to space them all out so you wouldn't see you know like a whole row of empty and then a whole row of full and it was kind of interesting going through the whole season selling out of these I would highly recommend picking these up if you're selling at a show. So I'd have to say by far the number one most exciting part of my whole entire breeding operation is selling snakes at reptile shows and at first I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or not but you meet so many people and the thing I like the most is the people coming up to the table and some people are just you know infatuated with snakes and they they come back again and again and again and they're just looking at all the different colors and patterns and and stuff they haven't seen before stuff they're thinking about buying and there's a lot of people especially the kids they walk by the table and I'm like hey you want to hold a snake and they're like really we can hold a snake that's awesome and I give them a snake to help to hold and a lot of times it's the very first time that these kids or sometimes even the adults have ever held a snake and a lot of times you'll see the fear melt away or you know the amazement in their eyes just the wonder of holding a ball python for the very first time it's pretty amazing especially when they realize hey the snake's not gonna bite me and it's a really cool it's and most people say that's softer or warmer <laughs> than they thought you know I actually have I actually put uh, heat strips under my displays and put it on a thermostat and run it at 90 degrees so when people pick up a snake it's about 90 degrees it's a nice warm soft snake and it's really mellow because it's really they really enjoy being in the display case because it's 90 degrees so that's pretty cool as a matter of fact a lot of people come up and they're like hey it looks like all your snakes are sleeping what's going on and it's because I have the heat mat under each level and I think my snakes are a lot more comfortable than a lot of other people's snakes where they don't have the additional heat in their displays so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time